Phil myself. Phil Collins. Holy shit. Uh oh. He's, right. he's talking about barbecue oh, and we got Phil Collins right. walking in. I don't know if Phil Collins is going to join us on the barbecue conversation. No, please come in. Come in. Please come in. He was he was boring the hell out of us with his barbecue talk. Me too and my gambling. How are you, Mr. Collins? Holy How are you, sir? Nice to meet you. My pleasure. I'm. Uh, you look good. I'm Opie. That's Vic Henley, and that's Carl. And uh, Opie, Opie, Opie and Vic Henley. Vic. Rick. Vic. Vic. Rick. Yeah, Rick, Rick, Rick. And I Vic. also call you Vic. You can call me anything you want, he's, Bill Collins. He's Vic. Vic. Yeah, he's a, he's a stand-up comic. Uh, this guy's a star chef. of the Food Network, a chef. And this yeah. is his show. Oh, and uh, I do a little radio. Yes, he's the host of this. And I've been a I've been a huge fan of Phil Collins and Genesis forever. Forever. We started... It's a brave, brave thing to admit. <laughs> <laughs> I said that to him. I did say that to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why, why is that? Uh, it got uh, me yeah. through some good times, some bad Bad times. I, I said it earlier to start the show. I will always love you because I lost my virginity to Abacab. How about that? I bet you've never heard that before. No, I haven't. And it's a ten-minute version on the song. Well, so yeah, that's pretty <laughs> impressive. That one. Well, I, I you lost your virginity to a ten-minute song. <laughs> it shows staying power, I, man. I don't think I made it to the end of the song. Sorry. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't <laughs> think I made that. it to the end yeah, of the song. We did a faded out <laughs> version. Right. Maybe that's it. How? Uh, congratulations! The Jimmy Fallon last night it was great in Thank the you, air tonight. Yeah. That I was didn't see it, but uh, you didn't see it. it. It came across great, man. How did it feel? It felt great, you know. I mean, it, it, he's he's very funny, and uh, it, you know, it was, it was a, you know, when someone says you're fantastic, I mean, you you, got, you really can't not enjoy that, can you? Uh, I agree. <laughs> no, you know, no. That keeps it, me coming it, in here. It, it was great fun, and the band. I had a couple of my guys there, but but the band, fantastic, right? And then. Uh, Questlove was on the drums, and, and when yeah. he did the fill, the place went nuts. Yeah. The famous, you know, yeah, yeah. Phil <laughs> Collins <laughs> fill. Yeah, sure, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he, he was, you know, there was a had the edge, you know. He was because I he you know he said to me that he'd, he'd kind of been a, been a fan for a long time, and drummers, you know, we were kind of we were a fraternity, so. right. Yeah, but did you did you want to play the drums last night? I know you're having a tough time uh, playing um, these days. No, I'm I'm staying clear of that for the moment. I've got to sit in my garage and sit in my garage and, and uh, tinker around a little bit. Tinker around, yeah. How long has it been since you've been performing? Well, Pence. Uh, I mean, I did the U.S. Open, right? So that's not long ago. That was just two songs. That's my yeah. role wrote really, but. Um, the this, golf or the tennis? You're talking about the tennis? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the tennis. Right, right, I forget, yeah, I forgot he did two songs to right. open up the whole yeah, uh, okay. tournament. Sweet. And then the three uh, three shows this year for charity. You know, I did my, I've got a uh, I've got a foundation with my third wife who I'm back with. I, I heard. Congratulations. <laughs> nice. Lovely. Life. Did she give any of the money back? <laughs> <laughs> No, do you know? <laughs> sorry. Holy shit. Sorry. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Me either. Oh, I'm no. out of breath. I apologize. I want to go home. <laughs> I was going to do an English TV show, <laughs> and I didn't do the show for some different reason. But I, this guy, uh, he's very, very uh, camp, you know, and, and I knew the first question he was going to ask. Who is it? Graham Norton. Oh, yeah, Graham Norton. We love Graham Norton. Yeah. And uh, uh, he, I knew he was going to say, well, did you get the money back? Oh. Uh, um, no. I thought that was an original. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you're the only person that said, because that, I didn't do the show with him. Okay. Um, but you're the only person that's mentioned it. But, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't. <laughs> no, she didn't. <laughs> no, of course not. We get the answer, though. I, no, I asked, because yeah. that was one of the biggest settlements. Uh, oh, really? Oh. Yeah, I beat McCartney. I was gonna, that was where I was going. That is exactly what I was about yeah. to ask you. Wow. Can, can I say the number? I don't want to insult you. I heard I heard it was close to 50. Son of a bitch. It was... Um, 50 mil. Oh, that's 50 million Swiss francs. Ooh. That's which even is, more. Which, Ooh, which, yes. No, which is... Similar. You no, know, about 26 million quid. Wow. Oh. So double. All right. I, was, right. I didn't do my... She had a very good lawyer. So... <laughs> 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 he did. You know, I mean, you know, he was naming the shark. Yeah, the shark. I gotta but, ask you. I gotta ask you about in the air tonight. Was that uh, going to be a Genesis song? I've heard over the years that there's been rumors that you had that song, but you didn't want to give it to the band at the time because you were sort of thinking that you wanted to maybe start a solo thing. No, I mean, uh, at that point, a solo album w was not on the cards. Um, I had spent about a year 
just because the other guys in the band were, had been f doing their own first solo albums, I've just been writing and, and, and I'd come up with, you know, 14, 15 songs. Well, they, they were doodles that became songs. I recorded them at home on my little studio. Um, and then we had one day, uh, I moved, the band moved into my house, you know, because it was just me there. And we, you know, we started rehearsing. And then we had a, sort of a day when we played each other some stuff that we'd written. A couple of songs that Tony had left over from his album, Mike the Same, Me. I, had, I didn't know there was going to be an outlet for my stuff because I didn't know I was going to make an album. So the, the chances are that I would have played them my best stuff sure because as far as i was concerned this is not going to be the only outlet for it right um tony banks insists that he didn't hear it otherwise he'd have nabbed it for the for the genesis <laughs> oh are you saying that you actually played it for them and they don't really remember he's think, yeah i think he's, he's saying yeah, that's what I you're played thinking my yeah. i played my demos to to mike and tony right of which one would have been in the air tonight all odds one would have been in the air tonight okay. and the two that were they chose which uh, was Misunderstanding, which right. was... That's a good one. That was a big hit. That's yeah. a great one. That's a great and song. And then uh, Please Don't Ask, which was a very personal song, but they like, they, they loved the song. So right. so the rest I put back in my my pocket until we'd finished Duke, which right. was the album we were working on. I love uh, Duke, by the way. I love well, well, I, that I, album. I was supposed to go up to... I did go up, in fact, to London to visit Armit Ertigan to play him Duke. Um just because so, he was in London and, you know, just keep him up to what we were doing. And he knew that I was going through a divorce and I was not in a particularly good frame of mind. And he asked me what I was doing and I, and, I, and I had a cassette in my pocket. And I said, oh, I've been writing songs. He said, well, let me hear some. He heard in the air tonight and he said, wow, man, this has got to be a record. This has got to be an album. I'll do anything you want, anything I can. It's got to be an album. And it's at that point that I knew I had a, was going to make a record because I got so much enthusiasm from him and I loved that man so much and, and I respected him um, that at that point, that's when I knew. But, you know, I, I will I will always be arguing about this Tony Tony Banks thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Mike doesn't remember at all, which, which is... Um, <laughs> oh, Mike, come on. Mike's get, good. He's on the get fence. Get in there, Mike. He's on the fence. He's it doesn't matter. <laughs> that means he really remembers. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> not saying, it hurts too much. He's just not saying. <laughs> right. Uh, and, and the first time you sang for Genesis, was it off Selling England by the Pound? First time, no, the first song I sang with Genesis was, uh, was for Absent Friends, which was on Nursery Crime. Oh, okay. And then... Then the next album, no, sorry, then the next album was Foxtrot. Right. I didn't sing on that. I mean, right. I sang backing vocals. Right. I, I did all the backing vocals. Um, and then there was Selling England, and that was more for me. Yeah, that's the one. I, I always thought that was the first one you did for Genesis. Yeah. I'm I, I just learned something one. today. But I'm an early, that, uh, That's Clive Davis. This is one of the most influential people in music ever, yeah. possibly. So yeah. when he tells you, that's it right there. Well, that's right, you know. I mean, I got Genesis to sign in 1973. Our record label was up. Our record deal was up here. Um, and I said, we really should sign with Atlantic because Atlantic, you know, such a great label, such a great history of music. And I was, you know, a big R&B fan. And, um, and so Genesis signed uh, to Atlantic and, you know, Armit became a great, great friend. I think, you know, he saw... The, I was just playing drums then, you know. But, he, you know, he, we became great pals because I was a jazz fan. Mm. And he knew I was an R&B fan. So we kind, of, we kind of had lots of mutual ground. And I right. loved him all right. the way down to the uh, the last. Yeah, the, the Rubiot is a, is a double CD. They did a 40th anniversary yeah, of Atlantic yeah. Records. And they had a big concert, I think, at Madison Square Garden or somewhere. Yeah. And they, everybody came and played. Well, the 40th anniversary that, of Atlantic. Yeah, that's a, that, I, 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 think I played that. You're on that. You I know, didn't know. See, I, again, I, this I is... opened the show, which was, you know, really... <laughs> <laughs> just me on a, me on a, me on a, me on a piano. Right? I love when I'm stupid. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was me on a piano and a half full auditorium because people were arriving. You know. Um, anyway, and Genesis did a. a Wasn't set. that at the Garden? Wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was at the Garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love how he just. And actually, Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah. Zeppelin played, and, and I think Jason Bonham, who pl who later played right uh, with Zepp, uh, he he played drums that night. And a lot of people say, and I don't, I, I disagree with this, uh, Mr. Collins, that uh, you ruined the Zeppelin uh, reunion at Live Aid. 
They didn't sound good, and it had nothing to do with Phil Collins. Oh, in eighty five, eighty five, he was he was playing. I with, remember he with, flew on the plane. He, he yeah. flew from uh, London to <laughs> Philadelphia, right? Look at look at the smirk. <laughs> you look at. I, I, I remember every second of it. I, I, uh, I we I just got the book yesterday, but I've been you know researching online and whatnot. And uh, you have a lot of regrets for uh, going from London to Philadelphia for live well, aid. Uh, part of I mean part of the the book, the effects of the book, has made me realize you know come to terms with. No wonder there was some, you know, bad press. Some, you know, people getting annoyed, and the, uh, you know, because I was everywhere, doing everything. I was doing this album. I mean, in one year, I did a Genesis album. I did a, 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 a solo album. I did a Eric Clapton album. Mm-hmm. I, I did a, a Philip Bailey album, and I did an a, a Frida from Abba album. Oh, I forgot about Frida Lingstad. No, I know yeah, from Abba. Frida Lingstad, yeah, <laughs> from Abba. <laughs> I forgot and, about Philip, uh, the Philip Bailey project yeah. too. Oh, Easy Bailey lover. was great stuff, man. But so, I did all this stuff, you know, and looking, you know, working on the book and seeing how long the tours were and seeing the one thing after the other, I did come to understand why I became annoying, omnipresent, and annoying. Right. right. And the things with uh, the the thing with um, with Live Aid was was it also came. At a point where Phil Collins, you know, is doing Live Aid, um, and he's not only going to do it once, he's going to do it twice, you know. And I, I remember being asked, uh, Sting and I had met at, at the Band Aid record session, and, and we got on very well. So, you know, he called me and said, why don't we do something together? So we did something together at Wembley. And then uh, a, b- before that, I'd someone had asked me about playing with them. Um, my, you know, do I want to do anything else? And I always love playing drums with people. So I said, well, where's Eric and Robert? Because I'd just done albums with them. Right. And uh, I was told they were both in America, playing in America. So I said, okay, well, that's that. And then a couple of days later, someone came back to me and said, uh, you could do it. You could get Concord and do both. I said, all right, if it's possible, I'll do it. Yeah, no problem. So I remember, how, I mean, as a fan, I remember how cool, cool that, that was. very cool, yeah. Um, I but I did say I'm not the only one, am I? And uh, they said no, 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 because Joanne Duran and Power Station were going to do, you know, that they shared members and they were going to do one, you know, set in each in each space. Uh, anyway, by the time I got there, everybody had chickened out, so it was just me. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm the flagship. I'm the, I'm the flagship. You understand? Right. How I, I understand now. Right. It would have um, been nicer if it was a few other people. Yeah, that, that you know, of course, I this. arrive in the Philadelphia and show off, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but what, what we see, it's all in the book. I mean, uh, uh, you know, it, it is a good story. But this whole thing with Zeppelin started when Robert and I met in Dallas. I think either I was rehearsing there or he was rehearsing there. And he or I both came, to, you know, together. And he said, could you get me on this show? I said, man, you're Robert Plant. You don't, need, you, know, <laughs> you don't need me to get you on the show. Just call Bill Graham. And yeah. he's old, old Bill Graham doesn't like us, which is another story. Um, but uh, I said, he said, you, me, and Jimmy could do something. Paige. Yeah. Wow. I said, sure, that sounds like fun. You know, yeah, count me in. I'm, you know, I played with anybody. I play with everybody. I can, you know, I got big ears. I, I, I saw Zepp's first gig at the Marquee. I can do this. Anyway, in the two weeks between that conversation and the concert, it's become Led Zeppelin. And there, it, it's not me, Jimmy, and Robert having a blow. This is John Paul Jones, and they've had a drummer that's been rehearsing with him for a week. So anyway, um, to cut a, a long story slightly shorter, um, I wasn't made to be very welcome in the uh, Goat's Head caravan. Um, you know, uh, Jimmy was very unhelpful. <laughs> um, and <laughs> I'm going to use that for the rest That's, of my life. I was going to say that is the most tactful, yeah. English, polite way to say he was a dick to me. Yeah. <laughs> my mother in law is very unhelpful. <laughs> he was very unhelpful. And actually, actually uh, Tony Thompson, bless his heart, who was the drummer, was fantastic. I was drummer. trying to remember his name. He yeah. he wasn't uh, having it that no, you were no, there no, as well. He, you know, he, he'd been rehearsing, right? And suddenly there was this English dick that comes swans in off concrete, right? You know. Probably had a few champagnes, you know, 
four grams of coke or something, <laughs> and he's going to fuck my show. Four. Don't say I know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I know. I know. Talk, I know way, one Phil. bump off the end of a key. I don't know four yeah. grams of no, coke. No, I'm Cuban, <laughs> Phil. You can direct all that to me. I'll yes. sort it all out for you. Believe me, I mean, I was. That's a Tuesday. I had to be straight as a die on that day. It was. A, it was a day of logistics and and playing and you know, but uh. In fact, I think it was some of the guys in the Zep caravan. <laughs> was, but the, um, I was made to feel very uncomfortable. And I say the, the, the drummer, I played with two drummers for a long time. And I said, I think we should try to avoid this kind of thing, try to avoid that kind of thing. And, of course, he went on stage and he did exactly what he wanted. And I was kind of found myself playing the air a bit. Ah, um, so he didn't, you went the drummer, drummer hookup and he didn't play along. No, I mean, I, I so to speak. Know, I, I felt like walking off, mm. but I would I couldn't walk off quietly. Right, right, and we'd now be sitting here talking about why did you walk, walk off? off. Oh my God, they wouldn't have uh, yeah, let that no, down. No. But they, you know, they, you can see it. it's like you know Jimmy was not 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 on his best, and and Robert, you got to be match fit to sing that plus sure. the nerves, right. And um, anyway, but I got pilloried for it. The reason I'm even talking about this is because the guys pilloried me in the music press uh, for being pretty much the reason right. why they sounded crap, you know. And uh, so I just wanted to put, you know, I mean, you know, in a humorous way. And it is done in humor. It's not done in bad taste. It's, uh, I just wanted to put the record straight with that. Yeah, the, the book. I mean, what I've read online here and there, excerpts. It, it, it's it's going to be a great read. Phil Collins, not dead yet. Uh, the memoir is out now. So, uh, yeah, I was disappointed by Zeppelin at Live Aid. That's for sure. I'm not disappointed that he used the word pilloried twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ecstatic that you just. I don't know what that means. <laughs> and it wasn't. I do. It's a, it's, a, it's a medieval torture device. Uh, the yeah. pillory. And it wasn't your fault. I mean, you were. I guess technically they 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 call it being overexposed, but it wasn't like you were forcing the issue with all these people. Everybody wanted to do something with Phil Collins. Well, right. If Clapton calls you and says, "Come produce," how do you my say record? no? How right. do you say no to all exactly? This, is, this was the thing. You know, these are calls. If you say no, they never call you back. I mean, Eric was a country neighbor friend. You know, we were great, great friends, and we were actually drinking pals before he knew I was a musician. But um, <laughs> the, okay, how that happen? Okay, well, back story. that up for a second. Yeah. He didn't get out very much. <laughs> but the, <laughs> when you were asked to do it, I just, I just, I just said yes because it, it was great fun to do. Yeah. Um, but it was overexposure, and I have to say, I can understand it. If you, if you, if every time you turn on the radio, you're going to hear one more night or against the odds or Cecilio, or you can't I love anything. Oh, for fuck's sake, <laughs> leave it out, you know. Yeah. And um, uh, but I, but I've actually since coming out here and talking about this, you know, I have to say that I only wrote Cecilio once. You know, and I recorded it once. Mm. I didn't record it a hundred thousand times, and, and I recorded it once. Right, and then people played it on the radio. Yeah, I like the song. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, it's not that. I love the. I love song, the song. You magnify that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my favorite. Is it your now, favorite? Come on. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Cuban. Ah! I'm Cuban. It's the best. No, but he, was, he just said, "Oh, come on!" <laughs> I, I got yelled at by Phil Collins. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> For liking Susudio, I really like Susudio. I don't dislike it. I just, you know, and then if American, I didn't hear it again, it wouldn't bother me. You know? Well, but the, then American Psycho made that song just uh, amazing. Uh, Did you? Uh, was it you that uh, is? Did you do is the Clapton with Tina Turner tearing us apart? Was that yeah. is that you? Is that was that was that on yeah, another yeah, that record? That was on an album. I, did, I produced two albums for Eric. One was Behind the Sun, and the other one was August of which, August. That's on there. That's a great track. I, yeah, I always yeah. wondered if it was Clapton that reached out to Tina, or did she reach no, out, or as uh, the producer, did you reach out? No, I think we we, we thought. Um, I think probably. Um, there might have been a Princess Trust gig where we'd all come together and... and okay, and right. They, you know. But i tell you something that's terrifying. Yeah. Is when you're a producer, and, and obviously, you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan. I, I mean, I remember standing oh, at the bus you. stop when I was 14. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> huge fan. I was standing at the bus, bus stop when I was 14, 15, listening to Cream play at a club wow. by the bus stop. And then 25, 30 years later, I'm producing an album for him. You know, he's become one of my best friends. Right. And so 
there was he and Tina Turner did this vocal live, you know, in the studio together at the same time. And uh, I knew when the track was going to be, you know, I knew, I knew when we were reaching the end of the of the column, what would be the fade. And I thought, what am I going to say? What am I going to say? Um, so the tape stopped, and it, you know, they both looked at me in the in the control room, and I said, "That was that was great. That was uh, very great." Very great. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, it's just an awful sort of. It's very great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you know, I had, I just went bright red. Right. Uh, they're, they're saying you got to go already. We were just getting started, but uh, the book uh, not dead yet. You're you're letting it all out there, talking about your divorce, um, yes. the fact that you you became an alcoholic at 55 years old. After you were just found yourself at home not doing much of anything, so you started drinking a lot and just watching sports on TV. Yeah, how's that going? Are you uh, better? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. I think he has a wine every I, now and then. Do you have a wine yeah, every a now and then? Yeah, wine you know, I mean, I, I had, I didn't touch a drink for three years, and I moved into our, our new house uh, a year ago. And it was the first Christmas, actually, a year ago. And I said to Tori, I said, you know what, I'm going to have a drink. I'm going to have a glass of champagne to celebrate. And I can have a couple of, you know, I, we haven't got time to discuss it, but, I mean, I don't have actually consider myself to, be, to have been an alcoholic. I had too much time on my hands right. because my family were living in Miami and I was living in Switzerland and I'd retired and I just got on a roll. Eventually, I, I started to kill myself. And um, so I, I can have a couple of glasses of wine, two or three glasses of wine, go to bed, you right. know, no problem, I stop get, drinking. Some days I don't drink at all. Yeah, I, I guess I asked that because it was to a point where they were basically, you know, talking about if your papers were in order. Yeah. You were in ICU in a hospital and it wasn't looking good. They, he's right. got to go. All right, they're freaking out. Phil, I, oh, I mean, man. I'm a huge fan. I can good talk God. to you for another hour. Yeah, right. I can't, I, I can't wait to uh, actually officially read the book, even though I've gone through a lot of it just online. Phil Collins, not dead yet. Uh, all right. Anything else? You're, you're going on tour a little bit? Yeah, I'm more doing shows next year in, in Europe. Uh, just three weeks of shows. And right. then we'll see. My son's going to be playing with me. He's 15. That's what awesome. does he play? He plays drums. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I Naturally. saw some. Uh, he's, yeah. he's really good. I saw him online. He, cool. He knows what he's doing. I, uh, I would kid. hope. Of course. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. Well, I'm he sure. wouldn't be doing it if he, if he didn't. Right. Well, I mean, yeah. I you know, I'm, not, I'm not sort of. And uh, you're, you're good with the other the kids? Way. Huh? All the other kids, everyone's good? Yeah, everyone's great. Yeah. All right, good. All right, we'll take a quick break. Let's get Phil Collins out of here. All Thank right, you. I All hate right. to see you. Thank you, guys. This was nice to meet you, man. Perfect. No, no, good job. 